Hi everybody, it's Night Fear, <clears throat> and I wanted to go ahead and come on and do my January um, wrap up, and so I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, an excuse for the noise, because of course it's Saturday and the kids are home, and so yeah, they've been really loud today. <laughs> so, alright, so the very first book that I read, I only read, I had 16 on my TBR, I really wanted to get through at least 10, well, I read five. So the first one I read was The Tale of Despero by Kate, uh, is it, I think it's De Camillo, hopefully, um, and loved this book. I gave it four stars. Um, this book is about the little mouse, and his name is Despero, and he actually is not like all the other mice. Um, and he ends up finding this book, and he reads it, and he decides he's going to be a hero. And then later in the book, he meets a princess. And so the rest of the book is all about um, how he rescues the princess. So that's basically what the book is about. And it's just a sweet little tale because it's, you know, it's kind of like The Hobbit. It's one of those tales, um, or Lord of the Rings, you know, it's more like... You know, how the, uh, how even if you're little or even if you're small that you can do big things. This is kind of one of those stories. Now, I probably would have given it a five out of five stars. But I just, the writing kind of, I don't know. It, it just, I didn't really enjoy a lot of the writing the way it was written. Um, but I definitely would recommend it. You know, it wasn't a horrible book and the story was very, very sweet. Um, so yeah, so if you ever get to read this and it's, and it's, um, what was it? Uh, 269 pages. So it's, and then, and this one had, you know, illustrations in it too. So it's not that big of a book. So if you get a chance to read it, I, I would definitely recommend, um, reading it. Okay. So the second book I read this month, um, is called Redeeming Love by Francine Rivers. I gave this a five out of five stars. This is actually a Christian romance, and I have never, ever read a Christian romance before. And I've actually had this book for a really, really, really long time, and just, I don't know, I, I just didn't read it. And then I saw somebody talking about it on BookTube, and they said what an awesome book it was, and so that's why I decided to read it. Um, so this book is about Angel, and Angel... Um, it's during the 1850s and it's during the California gold rush and Angel, it tells about her childhood and it tells what happens to her to cause her to become uh, a prostitute. Um, and she's actually, um, in the beginning, well, in the very beginning, it's like a, uh, you know, a forward kind of thing or not a forward. I don't know what you'd call it, but a prologue. There we go. Um, of her childhood, and then the first chapter goes right into her life where she's working at a brothel. Um, and she actually is walking down the street, and this gentleman named Michael um, Hosea sees her and instantly falls in love with her. And so basically, the rest of the book is him chasing her and her running away from love. Because through what happens in her past, she just doesn't think love is ever real, that anybody is ever real, and it just, it's, it's just, it's such a good book. I actually cried in parts of this book, and just, I mean, the romance is, is pretty good. Of course, it's a Christian romance, so there isn't any sex, which is nice, um, and it's just, it's just a good, wholesome story, and yes, it does have a lot of, you know, talking about God and things, but even that is not overly done um it's just kind of you know this is the fact and and just kind of goes on with the story it doesn't dwell um so i would definitely recommend this book um like i said five out of five stars very good book um the next book i read was full dark no stars um by stephen king um i only gave this a three out of five uh i love stephen king books but, I don't know, this one, it, it's, um, now I thought it was full of sh short stories, but I just saw another review, um, and somebody else called them novellas, and maybe they are, but I, I don't know, I didn't care for 
uh, most of them, I mean, they were okay, but I just didn't, I didn't enjoy him, them as much as I have his others. Um, so the first story is 1922. Um, and it's about a guy. Oh, I should have written his name. Boy, I'm crazy. Um, but it's about a man who, um, oh, let's see. It is Wilfred Leland James. Um, and he's writing a confession and he tells you his story and I'm not going to tell you anything about what he's confessing. Um, but basically it tells the confession and explains what the consequences of the act of what he did, um, and how it just ruined his whole entire life. Um, I mean, there's nothing, I mean, this could happen. Well, yeah, actually it could happen. Because it's kind of, at the end, it's kind of, and once you, if you've ever read it, you'll understand what I'm saying. But at the end, it's kind of like, did it really happen or was it just in his head? So, I mean, it could, it could really happen kind of thing. So it's, it's not, was no supernatural. Um, the second one is called Big Driver. And it's about a woman named Tess. She actually is a writer. She's written several mystery stories. And she actually gets raped and is left for dead. And actually, it's not a spoiler because it does um, say that in the in the blurb on the thing. Um, but anyway, it's basically about how she fights back. How she deals with what happened to her and how she fights back. And that one was pretty good, actually. That, that one was a pretty good story. But once again nothing really supernatural about it. So it's really kind of a different, this book, I guess, is more like what we do to each other, not, you know, what other things do to us. Um, the third one was a little supernatural. No, I mean, not a little. It was supernatural. It's called Fair Extension, and it's about a man who's dying of cancer. Um, he makes a bargain for an extension to his life, um, and it tells about um, what other people have to exchange or what other pa people have to have to give for his bargain. I did not, I really was enjoying this one. And then it's one of those stories that it's just going along, going along. And then all of a sudden it just ends. And to me, it didn't end with any closure. It just ended and it was like, well, okay. I, I just didn't like the way it ended. Um, the fourth one, um, A Good Marriage, is about a, a wife who finds out a secret about her husband. And once again, I'm not going to spoil it, so I'm not going to tell you what the secret is. But she finds out a serious, severe secret about her husband, something she'd never dream would ever happen. And it it's basically, the story is, can she live with her husband's secret? And it tells what happens. And I, I kind of enjoyed that one too. So, um, I mean, all in all, it had good stories. But like I said, the the first one was a little long and the second or the third one just kind of ended. So I don't know, but I mean, it's definitely worth a read. If you like Stephen King, it's, it's worth a read. Okay. And so let's see. The next book that I read was actually, um, an ebook. It was on my Kindle and it was, um, let's see if I can get this here. The Last Unicorn by Peter S. Beagle. And I chose this cover image because this is the one I actually owned this book um and it was lost and so but this was the cover that I had and it was a really good book if you guys have ever seen there's a cartoon movie um the book was pretty much exactly like the cartoon movie um basically um the story is this unicorn um she finds out that she is the last or she overhears two hunters talking and about that she's the last. And so she goes on an adventure trying to figure out what happened to the other unicorns. And on the way of this adventure, she meets uh, Schmendrick, who is a kind of a magician that isn't really. He wants to be a magician. He can kind of do magic, but it never turns out right. <clears throat> and she ends up getting captured. Um, and, you know, they just find a... Um, another lady named Bolly. I'm not going to, I'm just going to kind of briefly, because I don't want to ruin the story if, for you, those of you that want to read it. And anyway, they find out that, um, the Red Bull, um, who is kind of the pet, that's not, maybe not the right word, but, um, of King Haggard. And so they have to go to King Haggard 
and they have to discover what the Red Bull has done with the unicorns. And so it's really good. If you like unicorns, it's a really sweet story, really easy read. It was really short. And of course, the ebook that I read didn't have pages, so I can't tell you how many pages it was. Um, but it is just, it was a really good book, and I gave it four out of five stars. Um, I don't know why I gave it four stars. I just, it didn't feel like a five star book to me, um, but I did love it. So, so if you read it, let me know. I, I, you know. Okay, so the very last one that I read <clears throat> was Breathers. <clears throat> now, this one I actually got at the Dollar Tree. <clears throat> this was an awesome book. Um, I gave it four out of five stars. Um, just because there was a few... Mm, let me think how to explain this. Every so often he'd say, da 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 da, da. If, it, if you don't, it didn't have this happen to you, you wouldn't understand. Now, if it only happened a couple times, I, I think it happened almost every, every chapter, if not every chapter, then every other chapter. And it just, I didn't like that. Um, but other than that, it was a pretty good book. But basically, you start off the book and he's sitting in a pile of, I'm trying, I don't want to ruin it. So, but he's sitting in front of a refrigerator in a pile of, uh, or uh, in, in surrounding him is sticky. And he doesn't remember what happened. And so it, it, it's like he starts off and you're not sure what's happening. He's not sure what's happening. And then he tells you the story of how he became a zombie, kind of, because they never answer the question of why people become zombies. Um, you know, they don't get bit, nothing like that. But but it tells what, what happened to him. Um, and then he goes to... Um, oh, and his name is Andy. Um, and he goes to, um, these undead anonymous meetings where there are other zombies and they're trying to basically learn to live with being a zombie. Now, mind you, he cannot talk because when he died, something happened to his, his, um, voice box. So he cannot talk. Um, and he walks with a limp. So, and that does feature into the story heavily. Um, but anyway, it's basically, this whole story is about him, um, and what happens to him, and he finds love again, and, I mean, it's just a great story, and the ending, I almost wish he'd write another book to, te you know, to, to continue the story, because I really would like to see what happens, um, to him, and there's a lot of, I mean, it's like, zombies have no rights at all. And so it's kind of even a little, um, not, I don't want to say political, but it is just, it's like, well, how unfair that they don't have rights just because they're dead. Well, or undead, you know, so it, it's, it's just kind of putting a twist on not, I guess it wouldn't be racism. I don't know what it would be. Um, but it's kind of putting a twist on that, you know, just because somebody's different doesn't mean that they're bad. And it, it just kind of takes it to a whole nother level. Um, but definitely I would recommend this. It was a real easy read. Um, and once I got really into it, it was hard for me to put it down. And I, I read it in just a couple days, even with the kids and everything. I read it in just a couple days. And it's um, not really a long book. It's 310 pages. So it's not really that long. So, But anyway, that was the last book that I read. Now, I did try to read furthermore I got 23 pages in and I'm just like ugh. I just I just I don't know I, the writing style for me was just kind of tedious and I just I don't know I just couldn't get into this book did any of you guys have any of have, have any of you ever read this book and had that same problem um let me know if it gets better um I am gonna I'm not going to DNF it totally. I'm just going to put it on the shelf for a month or two and then come back to it and see if I can get back, you know, get b back into a mood where I, maybe I can can read it. But I just, that one's going away. I, I can't. <laughs> um, I mean, I took three or four days and I just, ugh. Um, I also started Aesop's Fables. I'm, let's see, you can't see my bookmarker. I'm like, you know, what, a third-ish into it um and I'm enjoying it it just 
reading his little things over. I mean, it's not like a book where you, you know, you get into one character, but it's all these little different stories. And so I'm kind of reading it, um, you know, off and on between other books. Uh, so this one will definitely, I'm sure I'll be finished in February. Um, and it'll be on my February TBR, which is, I'm going to record after I upload this. So that is my January, um, wrap up. This was the first wrap up I've ever done. So I hope it was okay. Um, if you have any tips for me or any suggestions on how to make the wrap ups better, let me know down in the comments and you, everyone, please be kind to each other and I will see you next time.